Okay, so taking assignment seven, which we submitted three things for to make an independent spot illustration. Think of it as a, a sticker or a tattoo, something that, that works no matter what surface it's put on. We had three things. We had a sketch, we had line art, whether we did it as a vector or as a high resolution raster image. And then we had some sort of color solution. So here you see just really, really straightforward. This is the simplest type of coloring. This is flat color which takes one local color for the blood, that one red for the blood, and then fills it in flat anywhere that there's blood. One local flat color for the, the feet, fills it in wherever there are feet, and then one local flat color for the feathers, and then fills that in flat wherever there are feathers. Right, so that works, that's really basic coloring, but then in order to get it to show up on different backgrounds, I added an offset around it, right, this white stroke. And then I also gave it a slight drop shadow. Now what I like about doing that is it shows this as a sticker. This is basically how it would look as a sticker. And we're going to be um, showing in the later videos of the Assignment 7 playlist, the Spot Illustration playlist, I'll go through how you can put it up to Redbubble and make your own products. But this video is about introducing Assignment 8, our next assignment. And what we're going to do is just take that spot illustration that's colored, whatever it is, that we have uploaded as a PNG, so it's transparent, transparent background. So I'm downloading that now. And then we are going to make a poster out of it. And we need two things to make a poster in addition to our spot illustration. We need some form of text, right? And then we need some form of background. So if we actually look in the class at the assignment sheets for assignment eight, it gives you a resource, which is really helpful. If you remember back to assignment two, when we were doing creature designs, the assignment sheet had a link to a Pokédex where you could look for Pokémon inspiration. So similar for the assignment eight assignment sheet, I give you this site, which is a pretty easy site to remember. And I don't have it in the links of our class because it's just kind of an extra tool you can use. It's not an essential tool of the class. But it is defont.com, right? And defont.com, kind of like Pixabay, is maybe the, the largest one I know of of free typefaces, where anyone who wants to can submit a vector-based uh, alphabet, you know, type design, sometimes with special characters, sometimes not, sometimes in upper and lower case, sometimes not, but at least it will have all the basic characters. And then these can all be downloaded and used in whatever programs you want. Now type design is vector design. So each one of these letter forms is created with a vector program. And there are specialized typography programs that make that easier. So there are a few decisions we need to make when we're doing our poster. And so I'm going to take that PNG, I got way too much open. Let's see. We're going to take that PNG that I downloaded and then move to the desktop. Right here. I'm going to open it up with Photoshop. Okay, so this is the PNG, just the flat colored PNG. Now already it should be a pretty good image size. So I did 10 inches by 10 inches by 350, right? But now we are going to make a poster size. So we're going to increase the canvas size of it. And this is, this is good for those of you who are already finished with your spot illustration and you're looking to move on today. So I am going to increase its width basically to the biggest that we can print in our lab. So it's going to be 16 inches wide by 20 inches tall. That's the, that's the, the 
largest standard size for a mat that we can accommodate in our printing lab, even if we're not in our lab right now. And that gives you a nice poster shape, right? So now on new layers on top of it, I'll go ahead and lock my spot illustration for now. I have to do what's called type blocking. And I'm not using my tablet. I'm not using anything fancy. You could do this in Photo P just as easily as in Photoshop. But I'm going to go on a blank layer, and I'll use kind of a, a blocking color, kind of a blue line color, just so you can see this is all sketchy. And I'm using a brush. Make that brush a little bit bigger so you can see it. And then I have to decide, OK, first of all, what text do I want to go with this headless chicken? And I'd already decided I want the words, don't panic, right? So I have those words, and I like the way they look in uppercase. Uppercase does a nice job of already spacing itself out better than lowercase does. You'll notice that all comic books, all the text is usually done in uppercase because it's easier to read, and it just spaces itself out nicely. OK, now this is a pretty pathetic poster, right, to just have the words kind of scrawled with a trackpad up in the upper left-hand corner. But at least I know what the words are. Now I want to deal with the blocking. And so the blocking means, where will these words go? And my immediate thought is, OK, well, I want maybe the, the don't text to go above the, the chicken and the panic to go underneath, maybe on a slight kind of curve. And that's what's called text blocking. And then I know there are four, I guess, really five characters here. So I can cut it up into five sections of roughly equal size. And then that kind of shows me, OK, the D is going to go in here, the O, the N. Man, this is sloppy with the trackpad. <laughs> the apostrophe, and then the T. And then panic, five letters. I can block them out here. Now, why I like doing this digitally is now I can take that and I can transform it, right? And I can get a sense, just like I did with my spot illustration for the overall shapes, of what the shapes of the text might look like. So what if I spread them out a little bit? What if I warp them so that this comes down? I'm kind of making up for the, the lack of quality of my drawing. And it's important to do this kind of blocking when you know what your proportions are for your poster. And it doesn't mean that my illustration can't be bigger or smaller, but this is just one solution, right? So quick sketching solutions. And you can do this in your sketchbook as well, of course. So that's blocking solution number one. And I might label the layer that way. OK, what about another approach on a new layer? Use purple this time. What if I have a don't panic right across the chicken itself, right? Because we can definitely do that. Two, three, and I'm going to make the apostrophe space smaller. And then one, two, three. Four, five. Okay, to make this a little bit more visible because it's on top of my illustration, I'm going to go ahead and give it a white stroke. And now I'm going to play with sizing it. So if I just put it right across the chicken's body, right? That might be interesting, but it might also require zooming in on the poster a little bit, right? So that's another cropping that can work. If 
By the way, when you use the brush, you can hold down shift. This is what I'm doing right now and get perfectly straight lines. As long as you're going at either 45 degrees or 90 degrees. So that's pretty helpful. You're just kind of blocking out. So that might be text blocking option two. And I'd like you all in your sketchbooks or digitally to come up. It's like uh, thumbnailing. I want you to come up with three different solutions for how the text, whatever text you want, can, can work with your image. And in my experience, you need at least three to fully explore the options. Sometimes you need more than that. So in a third option, I can push it up against the sides, right? I can kind of do vertical text. And I keep doing, uh, separating it into two lines. I could actually put like, don't panic all in one right here. In fact, maybe that, that will be what I do. So I'm going to do it as a big band right here. On the left vertical edge of the poster. And then I'm going to separate it. So you have a D, an O, oops. N, an apostrophe, a T, a space, and then panic, P, A, N, I, C. All right, so the way that might look is that the D would be kind of big and broad like this. The O, I could probably shrink those a little bit. You'll see how I'll use transform to, to help space everything. And just because we're doing type design doesn't mean we actually have to draw all of our own type by hand. We can do that, but we're going to modify existing typefaces that's going to be the, the best way for most of us. And that's how a lot of graphic designers work, unless they are typographers and specialize in making their own type. I am not a, a type specialist at all. That was not my favorite class in illustration school. All right, so now that I have that blocking, now I can mess with it a little bit. Command T, and I want to warp it, and I know I want a little bit uh, less space for the don't. <laughs> so I'm going to move all those up, and a little bit more space for the panic. And it just it gives us kind of a blueprint of where things can go. So this is text blocking solution three. All right, so I have three very different options for, for dealing with this text. That, something like that, something like that, right? And I don't need to decide exactly yet um, which one, but once I do, then I can start thinking about Okay, I know what my words are. What kind of type do I want? So I'm thinking I want something that's kind of hand done. So let's see. And so in the font, when you go to the site, do some sort of search. So I just search the word hand because this is all based on, on the tags that the uh, people that submit the typefaces use, right? So this is all kinds of typefaces that have hand somewhere in the title. But my thinking is that those are going to be more like handmade fonts, not so modern and clean looking, though that one's pretty modern and clean looking. And once you're doing a search, you can actually do a preview for your exact type. So if I know I want don't panic all in caps, I can 
And when I type it in the preview and I show it for medium size and say submit, 